I'm going to start again. I'm Gordon Cooper. I'm going to introduce the NXP portfolio of Cortex M based products. But quickly, NXP, for those of you who may not be familiar, NXP is a spin off of Philips Semiconductor. NXP actually has been around for 50 years in terms of people, technology, et cetera, patents, IP. It's only been in the last five or six years that we've been NXP. The headquarters is based in the Netherlands, but from a microcontroller division, we're right here in San Jose. So we're actually just, just down the road. I, I haven't been with the company an extremely long time, but it's interesting to me to go, oh, we have um, 28,000 employees and $3.8 billion company. So NXP is actually a, a big company that's been around for a long time. And the microcontroller division is, has been uh, steadily growing in the last several years. So The microcontroller division, as I mentioned, is based here. We did a lot of 8-bit work. We got into the ARM processors with ARM 7 and ARM 9. And, uh, and then we moved over to the Cortex M3. For those of you who aren't familiar, the, the M3 is kind of like a next generation ARM 7. Take the ARM 7 and add, uh, speed it up, add some things to the core, and basically we've, we've got um, a next generation part. We've, gone, we've been very successful with the ARM 7 at NXP, and we've basically taken some of the ARM 7s and made pin compatible M3s. NXP is 100% committed now on ARM, so all of our microcontrollers are ARM-based moving forward. So we don't have other legacy cores. We've got some 8-bit parts, but we're, we've, um, we're not end of lifing them, but, but we're not, there's no roadmap for us for 8-bit. We truly think that the M0 part starts to go into 8 and 16-bit um, areas. So M0, M3, and M4 are, uh, from a roadmap point of view, the areas that we're going to focus on and, and talk about in more detail. Our view, if you will, of, of the microcontroller DSC um, application processor space looks like this. So the M0 and M3 and the ARM7 fall under microcontrollers. We actually think of the M4 as not just a microcontroller, but a digital signal controller. Because it really is an M3 with DSP extensions to it. So, it, it. so it's actually into a different space. Semantics, you can call it a microcontroller with DSP on it. We actually think of it as a digital signal controller. It, however, is not an application processor. You would think of an ARM9 or some of the Cortex-A parts in that space. So if you want to run Linux or WinCE, that's probably the space you're looking at. It's going to be a, a um, usually a higher cost processor. You don't want to get down to the register areas as well. So the ARM9 uh, is our LPC3000 family, but the M4 is really more of a um, microcontroller processor with DSP extensions. By the way, if there are any questions along the way, raise your hand. I'll be happy to, to stop. If I wasn't being videotaped, I'd be, I'd be roaming out front, uh, but apparently I can't stand in front of the, the screen. And just so you know, the videotape is we're just going to put this on the web. So everything I say here, will be um, videotaped and, and added to the web, so I better be careful on what I promise, right? All right. Okay, so we mentioned that NXP is very focused moving forward on the Cortex M0, M3, and M4. And I mentioned that the M3 was where we started, uh, like an ARM7, if you will. The M0 is a lower cost, low power version, 8 and 16-bit space. It's a 32-bit processor, though. So if you're writing in, in C code, it's much more friendly if you're using 32-bit processors. The M4 covers the 32-bit space and into the DSP space. It, however, as I mentioned, is not going to replace every DSP out there. There are opportunities um, and, and sockets that it makes a lot of sense, but if you only want to do an FIR filter or an IR filter and you do nothing else and you want to do that as fast as possible, well, that's a DSP application. However, if you're doing an FIR filter, but you also have to talk to the USB or do some I/O over here, now the M4 probably has a lot of a lot of benefits for you. Just a quick uh, view. This is actually an ARM slide. The M0 is based in the Thumb architecture. The M3 is a superset of that, and the M4 is the M3, all of these plus DSP extensions multiply accumulate instructions. There also is a, an optional floating point unit that's available, but in our case, we made it 
we put it on all, all our M4 parts, and there's floating point instructions. So not only do we have M0, M3, and M4, depending on what your application is, your code on an M0 would actually run on an M4, or your M3 code would run on an M4. So actually, as, as you look at our, our continuum of, of, of M products, we actually think it gives you a lot of flexibility as the designer or developer to, to choose a platform, a single set of tools that could work with all of these parts. The M0 is basically, as ARM, this is from, from ARM, smallest, lowest power, most energy efficient 32-bit processor. What's really nice about the M0, it's small, it's low cost, and yet it's 32-bit, so it has a, a lot of performance. The reason this is important for the M4 is we actually embedded one of these on the die, and we'll talk about why we did that when we get to the M4 section. Okay, so the M3, industry-leading 32-bit processor. Um, our latest version is the LPC 1800. We have the 1700 family as well. It runs up to 150 megahertz. The, um, the M3 that's an LPC 1800 is pin compatible with the M4. So if you're looking for, for a design and you're not sure if you want the M3 or M4, 1800 and the 4300, if you look at the data sheets and even the selection guides, you can drop it on the same footprint. And it offered in all the same packages and all the same flavors, if you will. So uh, worth mentioning. Okay, and the M4 basically is an M3, as I mentioned, with, with DSP extensions. Not to win every DSP socket, but for the digital signal control space and with a, with a focus on easy to use. So my one DSP expert in the back, uh, not, not that somebody else may not have DSP experience, you're probably used to a proprietary core. Um, you're writing in C, but you're probably not, not afraid to get your hands dirty writing assembly code. I'm going to guess on the microcontroller side, you tend to avoid writing an assembly code if you, if you can help it. And so that's one of the benefits of, um, of the M4. At NXP, we take the cores, the M0, the M3, and M4, and add our peripherals, our memory, our flash, et cetera. And the families that we offer are the LPC 1100 and 1200. 1200 is brand new. I think there was a talk on it earlier today, M0-based. 1317 17, and 18. The uh, 12 and the 13 basically are, there's, uh, I'm sorry, there's pin compatibility with the 11 and the 13, but now you have an M3 or an M0, and there's pin compatibility with, with the 1800 and the M4. So the first M4 family is the 4000 family, and the 4300 is uh, the series of parts that we'll be talking about today.